In this video, I want to talk about three plying. Uh, I find that there are very few uh, videos online that follow a process from start to finish and try to help uh, newer beginner spinners try to figure out um, some of the ways to start with a braid, start with a fleece, and go all the way through the process of a finished yarn. I want to talk about two different methods I want to test out for a three ply since I have I happen to have two four ounce braids of Malbrigo with me. Um, the first one that you'll see uh, is going to be to strip the fiber lengthwise into three parts. Uh, and the next one I want to show you is splitting the fiber more horizontally based on the color repeat. We'll spin up both of them as three plies and see which one we like better. I have some Malbrigo and this is in the uh, Boreal colorway. I have two uh, braids of it. Malbrigo is one of the more compacted um, braids that you're gonna see and so if you see it in a store it almost looks felted because it's so compact and as you can see once you open it up it's quite a big lot of fiber and it looks really really compacted one thing that was pointed out to me recently is that when you look at top one of the nice things about it is that when it's created in the mills it's um, actually pencil roving these skinnier bits of fiber that are coming off the machine and they get kind of mushed together into the top. So if you look at the top, you can start to see, if you pull it apart just a little bit, you can start to see the kind of natural divisions. And so what I'm gonna do with this for my three-ply, there are tons of different ways to do three-plies. Um, I'm not gonna pretend to know even half of them. I'm gonna go simple on this one. Um, and what I'm gonna do is take this braid. So I'm gonna start roughly in the middle so that it's easy as I'm stripping to go one way or the other. Here you can see the pretty clear division between the three. So we're going to try to pull it down along this natural division. In this form, it looks very uniform. It looks like the whole thing is a rich, dark purple color, a red. You'll notice that the insides aren't always dyed like the outside. Now, some dyers know that that is a, an issue for spinners, and they will purposefully make sure that they're top or roving is saturated all the way around. I don't think that Malabrigo is kind of known for that. Okay. You can kind of feel in your hand that they're roughly equal. We're going to weigh them in a second just to just keep going. I have the whole thing stripped into three relatively equal strips. If you're trying to spin a three ply consistently from a single braid, you're going to want to spin consistently from one end to the other on each of your bobbins. And I'm just going to gently wrap it around my hand. I don't want to compact it. I'm just very, very loosely wrapping it around my hand. As you make up your little nest, you want to make sure that you're spinning in the same direction on the braid because the color is going to follow in a particular direction. So as you make them up, you're going to, I want to start on this end to make my nest so that I'll always end on this end and that's where I'll start spinning from for each of the three bobbins. And then I'm going to tuck this end in and then I know if I look at my little bumps of fiber here, this is the end I'm gonna start spinning from. Now, I can, you can see visually that this one's smaller than the other two, but let's just check and see. We're on milliliters. Okay, that's grams. So this guy's 40 grams. 45. And 31. Okay, so we did end up with uh, not quite a third, a third, a third here. If I, these two are gonna end up with more on the bobbin, I could take this bobbin, whatever's left on this bobbin, bracelet ply it so that I have two plies coming off this hand, ply it with whatever's left on this bobbin, and it'll end up with three, a three ply that allows me to use it from my waist. And now I'm gonna split this one um, into three parts based on a color repeat and go horizontal. So last time, the other first method was to split it vertically this way based on the three different pencil rovings that are in there. This time, we're gonna lay it out and we're gonna look at the color and see if we can find a way to split this so that we end up with a relative color repeat. I can see three distinct chunks horizontally. See how this is kind of happening if you pull it together? Right? And so what I'm going to do is take this braid and I'm going to pull off the end that's kind of cruddy. We're going to need to do a break down here at the one end and a break at the other end. 
So now we have three relatively equal chunks of fiber. You do have this chunk from the end and uh, the best thing to do is to just divide it into thirds and you could work your way if you uh, are going to spin this in chunks, so say you pull off the first chunk, pull off the second chunk, you could kind of insert this either at the beginning, the end, somewhere in the middle, um, and as long as you're inserting it in roughly the same place in each of the braids, then when you go to ply it back on, its, on itself, um, it'll work out just fine. So pick it up and very loosely again, make a nice little nest in my hand. And then just like our other technique, let's, let's have a weigh in. We've got 35 in this guy, 36. Second, 36. It's looking pretty even so far. Let's go for our last guy. 34. Okay, so the nice thing about this method is that we ended up, even when we pulled off our extra fiber and then broke this into three, we ended up with much more equal chunks. So our three ply, uh, assuming we spin completely consistently onto each bobbin, should end up with less waste at the end, uh, less extra um, single left on any one bobbin. Next step will be to spin this onto three bobbins, ply them together, see what we get. Spin this onto three bobbins, ply them together and see what we get. Two different ways of dividing up your braids for a three ply. We're at the end of our three-ply, two-ways experiment, and I'm happy to report that there is a difference depending on how you strip your roving. So we started out with uh, Malabrigo uh, Nube, which is 100% merino roving, four ounces. Uh, we had two of them to begin with, and they were both the 884 Boreal colorway, uh, and they both looked about the same. Uh, in terms of the, the dyeing and the saturation of the dyeing in the roving. So the difference was not in the roving itself or the colorway, uh, but in the way that we divided up the roving for the three-ply. In this first one, uh, this is the three-ply, or this is the roving that we divided to do a three-ply with a horizontal split. And that meant uh, lining up the roving so that you had the color repeats and pulling off that little piece at the end that didn't quite fit in. And then taking each one of those color repeats winding it onto a bobbin, separate bobbins, and then plying them together. Uh, and we ended up with a very purple looking skein here overall, I'd say. The other roving that we split vertically, so we just took our roving, undid the braid, and then split it three ways, just straight down, ended up looking very red and green, and has a completely different hue than this purple one. In the end, the three-ply, two-way experiment did reveal that, uh, especially with roving that's not completely saturated with dye, with roving that appears to be one color on the outside, but once you open it up, uh, it, the dye hasn't fully saturated the roving, so you have this kind of gradation going on, uh, you do end up with different color variation depending on which way you split the roving. I'm very happy with the yarn. It came out pretty squishy and soft, and uh, I'm was really interested to see the color difference. But one thing I would say is that the uh, Malabrigo, that the noob that I had, uh, was really, I was 
disappointed in the roving for a couple of reasons. One was that uh, it looked like it would have been a saturated kind of really beautiful dark purple color and it, it came out um, to have a lot of white space that was undyed uh, and a lot of yellows and a lot of uh, colors that it didn't quite represent itself as well in the roving form as it did once you opened it up to see what was going on. The other thing was that the roving was fairly felted in a lot of places, especially in the deep purple sections, and so it was it it was a real trick to kind of draft it. Um, so I'm not sure that I would want to work with this particular roving uh, again. I know that um, I've worked with a bunch of other breed-specific roving from some independent dyers, and their roving has been prepared a lot better um, and a lot more so that you could spin it a lot more uh, easily and it would draft a little bit better and the color was more consistent throughout. If so. you're interested in spinning and knitting tips, hacks, DIY, and fun experiments, subscribe to the channel, click the like button if you like this video, and we'll see you next time.